Nazi-occupied Paris comes alive with demons and surrealist manifestations doing battle in the streets. In The Last Days of New Paris, the new novella by China Mayville is the book I am reviewing on this episode of SFF 180. And thank you all for joining me, as always. Thomas here, your host. Okay, now, I'm guessing that back in 1938, when André Breton, or Breton? Breton? I, I, I'm terrible at pronouncing names. Anyway, when he and a couple of his surrealist colleagues collaborated on The Exquisite Corpse, which is this bizarre photo collage creature you're looking at right there, they never would have predicted their creature would star in a boss battle in a 21st century work of weird fiction by the genre's most prominent Marxist. Now, the surrealists saw themselves as revolutionaries, but the revolutionary thing China Mieville does here is conscript the surrealist aesthetic as well as the movement's politics into the service of a story that is a pure pulp wartime action thriller, a work of unabashed bourgeois entertainment set in a world that has gone surreally mad. Now, it's possible that the actual surrealists would hate it for that. Except maybe Dolly. Dolly seemed like he was pretty chill about that kind of thing. I mean, after all, he's a guy who had his photo taken while people were flinging cats, so he strikes me as a guy who maybe didn't take himself all that seriously. The Last Days of New Paris is just the tonic for those readers who are aching for that old China Mieville new weird magic, and who probably felt that this census taker, his novella from the beginning of this year, wasn't nearly weird enough. In this new novella, Mieville literalizes the concept of art as revolutionary act by having Nazi-occupied Paris embroiled in endless street fighting between the hallucinatory manifestations of surrealist automatic drawing and the hellish monstrosities called to life by Nazi occultism. And with the spectacle of centaur tanks and tentacle plants snatching Messerschmitts out of the sky, we have absolutely achieved peak Mieville with this one. The story is mostly set in 1950, nine years after the city was transformed by an explosion called the S-Blast, which was detonated through a series of circumstances that I will leave you to discover for yourself. Now the dreamscapes of the surrealists have taken on tangible, real-world form. The City of Light has been turned into the city of exquisite corpses and burning giraffes and telephones. Manifestations of surrealist paintings either walk or crawl or float or fly or otherwise move through the rubble-strewn streets and houses. And the city has been completely sealed off to prevent any of this from escaping into the outside world. But the manifs are uncontrollable, doing battle not only with Wehrmacht and SS platoons, but also any unfortunate human who might happen to stumble across their path. Still, the Nazis are attempting a kind of control, calling up not only their own manifs, but with the aid of a renegade priest, demonic entities from the abyss. Thibault is a young guerrilla surrealist fighter trying to survive on the streets and racked with guilt for failing to support other members of his cell who were slaughtered in an ambush. Now, at first his story seems to be moving randomly without any real sense of direction, but that's okay, it works here, because we understand that he is living in a world where all of the rules of reason and logic have been tossed out the window. Thibault eventually encounters an American woman named Sam, who at first claims to be a photographer assembling a book. Although that is a pretty transparent, obviously transparent cover story, although there have been instances where people have tried to break into Paris as curiosity seekers or even artifact hunters. Soon Thibault teams up with Sam in a race against time to uncover a Nazi plot that could turn the tide of events into a direction even more disastrous than the one everything is already in. Now, I actually ended up reading The Last Days of New Paris twice because on my first pass, my rhythm was constantly being interrupted because on every single page I was stopping to Google a reference for whatever piece of surrealist art was making a cameo in the story. China Mieville drops so many names of painters, poets, political agitators that after a while the whole thing kind of seems like fan service for fine arts majors. Now if you're a longtime reader of China Mieville, you're used to his rhythms and none of this feels particularly out of character for him. And it doesn't take you out of the story. In fact, for my own part, Using the book's endnotes, yes, the book has endnotes, to look up its endless stream of references made me more interested in learning more about the surrealist movement generally, and this took me to a couple of YouTube documentaries, and so I took a greater interest in the art and in the people and the times in which they lived, all the people who participated in it. And so that means that I kind of felt like I had been debriefed, and I was a, a bit more prepared for what the story was about to put me through. So in short, when a work of fiction 
makes you interested in learning something, that's a good thing. But Mieville's stroke of genius is incorporating this level of academic art school nerdity into a briskly paced wartime action potboiler chock full of shootouts and spies and chases and treachery and secret messages and you know, the odd bit of demon summoning. There are wildly entertaining twists and turns galore, and the brevity of the story really works to its benefit. Uh, the main story itself is only about 164 pages, and then there is this fourth wall breaking epilogue, and then there are all of the endnotes that I told you about. Sure, there is a Perdido Street Station sized epic that could very easily have been written here, but I think China Mieville took the wisest course, allowing his tales, images, and sensations to settle in your mind just long enough to feel like the haunting and indelible memory of a dream. And that is all I got for this episode of SFF 180, everybody. I want to thank all of you for joining me. As always, remember the most important thing. These are reviews. You are not always going to agree with me, but if you enjoyed watching, please hit that like button. Share the video far and wide with all your SFF reading friends. And above all, please sub. If you haven't done so, that is how the channel grows. And until I see all of you amazing people next time, happy reading.